We're here to show you AEM solution to wiring pain. All right, what do we have here, Dimitri? This looks like AEM's PDU-8. That's right, so there's uh, many different names that these are uh, called by. The most common one is uh, PDM or power distribution module. Basically what it is is a solid state electronic replacement for one of these guys. And what you effectively end up with is each one of these pins replaces a relay and a fuse. If you look, a typical setup would have some relays have five wires going to them, but the typical one has four, so you have the signal on the ground and then you have the power on the ground for the actual function. Usually you would want that uh, output protected, so you would also have a fuse. So that's six wires minimum. This is what you end up with, right? <laughs> so you're saying one wire here replaces six wires from the setup? That's right, or more. In some cases, relays have uh, even more. And again, this is just a dumb function where you hit a switch and the thing turns on, but you can also program logic. And once you blow a fuse, then that's it. You know, that function until you pull over and figure out which fuse is blown, mm -hmm. uh, you have to uh, replace it. Uh, that function is now out for the count. Whereas with this thing, you can actually program it to retry automatically because the fuse is virtual. Right. So if it ever fails, the thing detects an overcurrent, shuts off the output, and then it will try in an impulse saying, oh, can I turn this thing on? Whatever mm. problem that you had, is it fixed now? And then uh, it will be able to operate again. Most PDMs uh, have uh, different kind of logic builders where you can set this stuff up. Uh, AM has taken an interesting approach to uh, to theirs where it's basically like an ideal satellite PDM because, for example, in mine I have the ECU master in the um, uh, main area of the car running the motor and all the functions, but yeah. then you have the trunk which is far away, so even though you've reduced all this wiring down to only one wire per function, you still have to run the entire wire for each function the length of the car. Right. So if you want to turn on your, your uh, blinkers, your stoplights, your pumps, your fans in the trunk, anything else like that, you need a wire, usually of fairly serious gauge, yeah. running all the way to the trunk. Well, what if you could do all of that over two tiny little wires for CAN bus? Hmm. So you bolt one of these guys onto the back, you program uh, over CAN bus, sending a message to it saying, turn this on when I say so. Okay. And now you have just a little, you know, length of wire from this thing to whatever function you have. That's in ingenious. It's, uh, wow. In its home and, uh, everything is communicated over canvas. It's also remarkably small, isn't it? I mean, it is. Yeah. I'm used to seeing PDMs that are much bigger and heavier than this. Exactly. And that, I guess is part of its appeal as a satellite setup. You can yeah. put it in places where you wouldn't normally fit a larger one. Yeah. So these are only a channel, you know, most PDMs now you can get 16, some even 32. Mm -hmm. But again, if the whole idea is that it's designed to run some localized part of the car. Yeah. That's perfect. Like you don't want a big, big box where you're wasting a bunch of outputs. Yeah. You have four 20 amp, uh, outputs you have for 10 amp ones so you know if you want to run in my case I'm running a fluid transfer pump for the diff mm -hmm. the the cooler fan for the gearbox for the transmission and the differential uh, transfer fuel pumps and the blinkers in the back perfect right hmm. I don't need any more uh, any yeah more power than that and obviously if you run out of room on your main one you this also allows you to expand the whole system exactly it? you can daisy chain a whole bunch of these you know that's the beauty of cannabis as long as you don't have any of the messages interfering it's perfect wow. and, uh, I will show how you can nicely integrate this with uh, the rest of AEM's gear. You can have it showing up on the CD7 because it's communicating its state over CAN bus. Right. Well. So it's not just receiving data, it's sending it back. And then combine that with something like AEM's six channel CAN bus module. You can have a bunch of sensors in the trunk as well that also transmit the data back over the same two wires. So you have a bunch of sensors, everything's powered and grounded in the trunk and the data is going back over two little wires. So it's amazing. You don't need this anymore. Yeah, wow. I mean, the beauty of that too is this is dumb. It can't send you a warning light unless it's wired in. Exactly, like, like I was saying, you blow a fuse. Okay, which one is it? Get the tester out, you know, hopefully you can see it, but maybe not if you burnt out a wire, who knows? Yeah. This thing, you, you, you either open up your diagnostic page in your CD7, yeah. or you open up your laptop and have a look at it and say, it's like, hey, that output, it's broken. Amazing, oh, just it. troubleshooting like that, eh? yep, so. incredible. So what's the next step then? Next step, we'll go to install it. All right, I'm gonna stay away from installing it. <laughs> I'm not qualified to use tin snips or wire cutters or pinchers or crimpers or any of those things. Oh, that's the best part. Okay, so you guys are wondering uh, what the weird noises were in the background while Dimitri was speaking so eloquently. <laughs> it's this guy right here, my, bit, my number one troublemaker. Hi, Internet. Hi, Internet. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me, this time in my garage. 
Before we begin with the install of the PDU-8, do me a favor and if there's anything in this video that you see that you would like to see more technical content on, comment on the video or elsewhere on AM social media and I'll be happy to oblige because while AM has excellent tools for installing and configuring their devices and integrating with others, uh, you will see me doing a few things that are a little bit off the beaten path and in order to uh, make full use of the power of these devices and the software, it's very helpful to understand what's happening under the covers a little bit better. First, let's have a quick look around the car to see what's going on and uh, why this is such a valuable addition to it. The engine itself is a built-in turbocharged S52. It's running on uh, E98, turbocharged with an EFR 9280 from Borg Warner. Every function of the car and engine is monitored, all the way from the temperature of the airbox, things like pressure of the crankcase, both to monitor the performance of the dry sump and to see if I'm having blow-by or, you know, worse, maybe a cracked block. Similarly, pressure of the coolant in addition to the obvious temperature, measuring the ethanol content with an AM flex fuel sensor. And I even have these uh, pressure and temperature sensors for measuring the performance of the turbo and the intercooler. Comrade here does the fuel filtering for me as well as letting me know the fuel temperature and pressure. All four wheels have suspension position sensors and these can base tire temperature cameras. Moving on to the inside, we have the VDM telling me all my track information. On the dash, we have the can base keypad. And of course, the CD7 being the center of information. Moving on to the other side, I have the A-channel EGT module monitoring the exhaust gas temperature on every cylinder, a pair of these four-channel wideband controllers monitoring the air-fuel ratio on every cylinder, as well as letting me know the exhaust back pressure on each scroll of the turbo. Further down is the Infinity 708 running the show. Next to it is an MSCL uh, solid-state relay, which acts as a kill switch. And finally, the primary PDM, which is a PMU-16 from ECU Master. And this is a perfect segue for why the PDU-8 will be such a valuable addition, because next we're moving all the way back to the trunk. I have my radium fuel cell, which has multiple pumps requiring power, but also sends multiple signals. In addition to the obvious fuel level, it also has a switch to let me know whether or not the surge tank inside is full. There is a pump for the differential oil, which feeds this cooler, which has a fan of its own, and two temperature sensors for the transmission and differential. I also have the Intricta Dynamics fuel pump controller, which runs the main pump and sends back a bunch of data to the CD7. But you can see now how when you add the blinkers and stoplights to all of this, there's actually still a whole bunch of wires that have to run all the way back to the trunk. So in addition to robbing the main PDM of power outputs, it also still adds a bunch of wiring that has to go all the way back to the trunk. Now the data side of things is handled via CAN, thanks to the six channel CAN module and the CAN hub. But now we can also do the same for the power side of things with the PDU-8. So while it does make the most sense to have the controllers close to the front of the car where all the action is, as you saw, there's still a lot going on in the trunk. And even with the drastic simplification of the power wiring, thanks to the PDM, you still need to have one wire for each function going across the entire length of the car, but not with the PDU-8. For installing the PDU-8, I'm going to use this Astro Rivnut gun. I like that it's nice and compact, that I can get into tight spaces, and it's strong enough for smaller inserts. Rivnuts are a lot like normal rivets, except they have uh, threads on the inside. You install it onto the gun like so. You need to drill a hole that's reasonably close to the uh, outer diameter, so then you uh, insert it into the hole, squeeze the handles, and as it deforms, it will actually pinch the metal, and uh, giving you a nice, secure, and uh, reasonably strong uh, threaded hole to mount things to. For doing the wiring there's various tools you can use like uh, this really consistent and foolproof wiring stripper, this expensive barrel type crimper from DMC. And while those are nice you don't need anything like that we can just use this uh, wire stripper that I've had since high school. Gets the job done and uh, my Delphi cell crimper eBay special for 36 bucks. First start by stripping enough of the wires that it fits into the first section of uh, the pin crimps. The first section is for the exposed wire and the second part is for the jacket. Next, select the appropriate slot in the crimper, insert the pin with the wire in it, give it a good tight squeeze, and you should end up with something that looks like this. For the jacket crimp, I like to pre-bend them a little bit because they're so fragile, then run them through the crimper, and we have a completed pin. Next, I like to do a finishing touch that may seem unnecessary, but uh, if you ever go to maintain your wiring, you will be really thankful that you took the time to do this. For that, we'll need a label maker, some compatible shrink tube label tape, and some clear shrink tube. Type in and print your label. 
shrink it onto the wire, cut a length of clear shrink tube, a little oversize, shrink it on, and we're done. With all of our pins made and labeled, we can insert them all into the connector, flip the connector lock to lock the pins in place, and we're done. Finally, it's just plugged into the AAM Net CAN hub. It's powered by this big battery isolator. And now the PD8 is installed, wired, and now we can move on to configuration. All right, now let's configure the changes. For the monitoring side, thanks to Dash Design, it's nice and easy. We go to the CAN tab, we go to import the appropriate DPC file. Many of them are included, especially for AM devices. We open the one for PDU8. Mine is configured as the number two. So you expand these guys, you pick the messages that you want. You have the option of using the states for the different outputs as well as the measured currents. So you pick the messages that you want. You go to the design of the screen where you want to use the data. Here, for example, I have these lights showing me the state of the different outputs and below them, the measured current. For the configuration side, you will need a device that's capable of transmitting the CAN messages defined in the manual for the PDU-8. The most important one is uh, this message setting the max currents. So if you send a value greater than zero for one of the outputs, that effectively turns it on, as well as setting the maximum current for that output. The ID that I will actually need to use is A0621 for unit number two. Next, you have an optional message for any outputs where you need to control the amount of current coming out of them, such as for slowing down a fan or a fuel pump. In that case, you just send the appropriate duty through this message. My primary PDM is an ECU Master PMU16, which is configurable for transmitting custom CAN messages. The first one that I have configured is for setting the max currents, which basically enable these different outputs. The first one is for my gearbox cooler, which is a transfer pump for oil from the differential and the fans. And then I have the left and right blinkers, the stoplights, and the transfer pump, which transfers fuel from the fuel cell to the search tank. All of these used to be outputs that were taken up in the PMU, which had to run the length of the car, but uh, now they're just being sent out as members of this CAN message. So I have the CAN ID enabled up here. It's transmitting at 20 hertz. Now all of these are pretty straightforward except for the fuel pump, which is actually speed controlled. So let's have a look at how that's controlled. I have two different conditions. One is when you push the button on the keypad, it just turns the pump on at full duty. Alternatively, it uses this lookup table. The way this works is I have CAN messages from the Infinity for the calculated mass flow and a switch from the search tank letting me know when it's full. So when it's not full, then I just go full duty to fill it up. And when it is full, I just want to keep it topped up. So I scale the duty by the required mass flow so it's not running at full speed all the time. Okay, finally let's test out the changes. Let's try to turn on the left indicator. The CD7 sees that. The blinker turns on. Let's have a look at the PDU. It's flashing, meaning that it's receiving a valid CAN message. Next, let's uh, try to turn on the pump override. For that, I'll need to go to my diagnostics page. Here you see the state of the injector dynamics fuel pump controller and the search switch. Turn on the fuel pump override. This will prime the search tank. Wait for the search tank switch to turn on. There it goes, the CD7 sees that, and we're all done. So that's a wrap on this one. Thank you very much for watching. Please help the channel play the YouTube game by uh, hitting the like and subscribe, ring that uh, notification bell. And once again, if there's anything in this video you would like to see more technical content on, please let us know in the comments. And uh, until then, stay tuned for more cool projects.